he loves Herbert Wallace Jr. with all of his imperfections, all of the foolish mistakes he's made, Leslie, <laughs> all the stubbornness during the selfishness, the times in which I've been down and hurt arrows thrown at me and they landed heart crushed mind crushed spirit crushed ready to quit go home be done with all this stuff there's a God who says he loves broken people yeah. like me and like you and he says he can use broken people like me and like you amen 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 good morning to you out there online I know some of you may have lost the sound Facebook may have cut us off you can be seated in the house of both Facebook may have cut us off from a voice and a sound standpoint, but we apologize if that took place. They may have muted us, I'll put it like that. Uh, if they did, we apologize. If they didn't, you got to participate in worship this morning. God loves broken pieces like you. Miss Eleanor, God loves broken pieces like you. Alicia, God loves broken pieces, broken people like you. Lamont, God loves broken people like you. Mikey Mike, God loves broken people. Janiah, God loves broken people like you. Anaya, Shania, Anthony, Nehemiah, Shayla, y'all at that teenage stage where you're trying to figure yourself out, figure life out. And sometimes the people who say they're your friend ain't really your friend. They're taking your business and spreading it throughout the entire school. And you got teenage drama, as we used to call it. And you're trying to figure out who you can trust. And sometimes you don't even like yourself. Well, all my adults who've been through that. <laughs> Remember them high school years? <laughs> so from those of us who've been through that, we, we, we've been broken. We, we, we have our high school and our middle school wounds, and we have to deal with it. We just want to tell all of our teens, that God loves broken people. And if nobody else, you can try to depend on nobody else, you can depend on him. You can trust him. Amen. 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 All right. All right. Got a few announcements for you on this morning. First announcement is this Wednesday, this Wednesday, March 29th at 7 p.m. We need everybody to be on the Zoom call. We're going to have a church business slash finance meeting. Our lease is due to expire at the end of April. So we have a decision that we need to make. We want some information that we're going to present to you. And we need you to be on the phone, be on Zoom on Wednesday. No Bible study. Well, that's going to disappoint some of y'all. You know, we you live diving into the word, but no Bible study. We're going to talk about church business. You got questions about money? We're going to talk about money, all that stuff at the church meeting. Be there, seven o'clock via Zoom Wednesday. Clear your schedule and be there. Amen. Next one. All right. And then, in conjunction with that, we're going to fast. We believe in the power of prayer 
in the power of fasting. So on Wednesday, we're calling for a fast so that we can hear clearly from God. We're going to shut the world out, shut stuff out so that we can connect with him. So here's what we need you to do. 5.30 in the morning to 5.30 p.m., no food, just water only. Now, if you own some type of uh, uh, doctor-prescribed medication or stuff like that, and you know we say it every time, do what the doctor tells you to do. But if you're not, 5.30 to 5.30, no food, no social media. Only use your phone if you need to for work. No TV. None of those stuff that can be considered outside distraction. The only thing we're looking to do on Wednesday is pray. We're going to seek his face. Can y'all do that with me? We're praying. We're going to pray. We're going to petition him. We're going to seek him for clarity on what he wants us to do when it comes to this facility. Next one. All right, men, April 1st, April 1st, next Saturday, we are going to be at Life Church in Monroe. All the men, listen, if you missed it last time, you missed a great time. A collection of men coming together and worshiping and lifting him up and honoring him and glorifying him. It didn't matter what color of your skin. It didn't matter how much money you had in your pocket. It didn't matter your background. You could be tatted up. We didn't care. All we wanted to do was to praise the Lord. And we're going to do it again. Life Church, Monroe, April the 1st. We're going to be there at 10 o'clock. Then immediately after the service, after the fellowship, we're going to go out as a group of men at resort. We're going to get a little something to eat and hang out. All right. Clear your schedules, guys, and be there. April the 1st, after uh, 10 o'clock. Life Church in Monroe. Next one. Easter is right around the corner. April 9th is Easter. We're going to have a great time. As you can see, we got an Easter basket over here already. So we're going to have the Easter egg hunt. We're going to have games and activities outside. We're going to have Dre out there in that sack again trying to hop around and beat Elijah. We're going to have uh, face painting. I need some face painters. I need some face painters. I got one right here. I need some more face painters. Some of y'all teens got some art skills. Some face painters. Need face painters. Yeah, I know you can paint. You know, face painters. Yeah, we're going to paint some faces. So we need y'all to be painting faces. We're going to have that going on. We're going to have all different types of activities and things that we're going to be doing. We need you to be in the house. We got ice cream social taking place and various different snacks. We need you guys to be here in the house. And don't you come along. Make it a plus three. Bring some folks with you. Bring mama and cousin Joe, sister Mary, your co-worker that you be gossiping with at work. Bring, bring, bring all of them with you. Amen. We're going to praise him. We're going to lift him up. We're going to honor him. We're going to talk about these nails. I might even change my whole message so we can talk about the nails. Ain't this wonderful right here? Can we give Jennifer a round of applause for that? <laughs> hey man, I got to figure out where to get nails in my mouth. I might change my stuff up. The nails, the nails, the nails. All right. So April 9th, start inviting. You guys should be receiving messages already from 21 Days of Hope, encouraging you and to invite others and get people involved. You should be praying for people, texting people. Let's make it happen. Amen. Right, we talked to Nehemiah the other day. Me and Nehemiah was talking. We were like, look, we want it to be where I have to go out and get that little TV out there in the, in the room and hook up Facebook on that TV because we got overflow over there. We're going to have overflow in that other room where we all got the TV mounted on the wall. We're going to turn that on, turn it on YouTube so they can watch. And turn it in the other room, put it on YouTube. Oh, so let me deal with that problem. You just invite them. Me and the techies, we'll get that solved. Amen? All right, all right, all right, all right. Lady Ann. Amen. Mom, make your mouth a little. 
so good to have one of these men of God. Amen. Amen. Well, on April the 22nd, where we typically be our World Growth Hub, our Women of Exhort, we're going to combine and do the Men of Exhort, Women of Exhort, and Youth of Exhort. So if you're eight years or older, we would love for you to come and join us at Samaritan's Feet as one of our outreach events. Actually, it'll be their 22nd anniversary. Uh, is that right, Mama John? 22nd anniversary. Um, breakfast and lunch will be provided. And it's just a way for us to just fellowship with each other, but yet give back um, to the community. And they're helping so many lives. In fact, we have an um, ambassador that's been over there a few times during the week, and that's Mama Joan. So if she can do it, we all can do it. So we would love for you to come out and just do outreach together. Come as you are. It doesn't matter. Huge warehouse, nice, clean space, and a great opportunity to fellowship with each other. Um, so if you um, need to do one thing, though, we need you to register. We need you to register to attend. If you see the QR code, um, if you can take a picture of it, you can register there. It's quick. Um, and like I said, anyone up to eight years and older can come out and join us. And when you do come, wear your Exhort t-shirt if you have one available. Or just come as you are. It's a lot of great fun, a lot of great fellowship. Amen? All right. What do we have next? All right. So now it's time for us to give unto the Lord. Let's prepare our hearts and our minds to, to give at this time. We're going to pray over our offering before we do. Angel, give me an envelope. So, amen. For those of you that are joining online, um, just give us a thumbs up. You're going to hang with us today. Give us a thumbs up in the chat. Can I have an exhort envelope, please? Exhort envelope. Thank you. I got one. All right. Awesome. Awesome. And for those of you that uh, continue to sow into exhort, We'd love for you to um, do that via Cash App, dollar sign Exhort CC, as well as our website, exhortcc.org. And then, of course, those of you that continue to bless us in giving online, that's P.O. Box 601, Huntersville, North Carolina, 28070. Amen. God has been blessing us. He's been taking care of you. If you breathing, if you breathing, just think about that little widow that only had two mics. She had two little coins, but she gave what she had. So we want to make sure that we are taking care of God's house and his kingdom work. Amen. Amen. We put something on the screen because oh. we're changing our mindset. Okay. My superpower is sacrificial giving. I'm not going to be the weak link the enemy uses to cause division. Instead, I am a vessel of sacrificial generosity who gives of their time, talents, and treasures. Can y'all say that with me? I am not, not going to be the weak link, going to be the, weak link. The, enemy the enemy uses to cause division. Cause division. Instead, Instead, I am a vessel of sacrificial generosity, sacrificial generosity who gives of their time, who gives of their time talents, talents and treasures and treasures that's who we are at exhort we're yes. sacrificial Amen. giver yes. we're not if i can utilize this bad term tight walls yes. we'll keep our hands closed and try to hold on to everything that God has blessed us with and keep it to ourselves. Yes. But we are sacrificial givers. We're not tippers. And we as a church, we're not like the restaurant. We're not going to give you the suggestion 5, 10, 15, 20%. We're going to let what God has already done for you to be the suggestion. Our power is sacrificial giving. We're going to be generous givers. Time, talent, treasures. Yes, 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 yes. Don't, 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 don't be the weak link. Don't be. The, we got goals and aspirations. We can't get that building if we got a bunch of weak links. 
Mm -hmm. we, 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 if we stay here, there's some carpet that needs to be replaced. Don't be the weak link. Mm -hmm. The sound system needs to be redone. Tired of putting pieces together. Don't, 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 don't be the weak link. That bathroom floor, I'm tired of looking at that schoolhouse tile. So if we stand here, we're going to do some things. Don't be the weak link. There are some people out there in this community that can use a blessing. And they shouldn't always have to go to the government to get a blessing. Or to some other organization to get some blessing. We got to be more than just a building in this community. Got to be a source of help. That's good, Pastor. But you got to be a vessel of sacrificial generosity mm -hmm. in order for that to happen. Can just be a few of us, all of us. Mm -hmm. You got time, you have talents, and you have treasures yes. that you can use. Yes. Let's be givers. Amen. 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 Let us pray over our tithes and offering. Father, you said to bring the whole tithe into the storehouse. There, there may be food in our house. God, you told us to test you, to try you in this, says the Lord Almighty. And see if you would not throw open the floodgates of heaven. Pour out so many blessings that there would not be room enough to store it. God, we just thank you. We thank you for being the provider, Lord God. We thank you for being the blessed, Lord, Lord God. God, we thank you, God, for even opening up the doors of heaven to want to even rain on us, Lord. So, God, as Pastor just said, we got time, we got talents, we got treasures, Lord. Let us not, God, come up short when it comes to the things that you have blessed us with, endowed us with. And we just thank you, God. We love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If our youth can stand, the babies, not the teens, but just the babies. So the, the babies, the Marleys, the kings. Amen. As they leave us, the babies. Tell it on the Grab your Bibles, grab your Bibles, grab your Bibles, and go to the book of Acts, the fifth chapter. Acts chapter number five. The book of Acts, the fifth chapter. Now, as we've been talking about, Luke is the author of the book of Acts, right? Well, who is the main character in the book of Acts? Help me out. Who's the main character in our book of Acts? There he is, Holy Spirit. Sometimes people say it's Acts of the Apostles. But the apostles are just vessels that God is utilizing to be a blessing unto the community. They are spirit-filled, spirit-empowered. But it's the Holy Spirit who has taken center stage. And it is the Holy Spirit who is moving. Remember, we've been talking about this on Bible study on Wednesday night. <laughs> that in the Old Testament, God the Father was the primary character. He was the man that was on the scene, the most visible of the three. Once you get to the Gospels, it's God the Son. Jesus is the most visible. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. 
But then when you get to Acts and the proceed and the following chapters, it is the Holy Spirit. And we see that in our foundational verse for the book of Acts. What's the foundational verse for the book of Acts? Come on, y'all online too. Type it in the chat. What's the foundational verse for the book of Acts? But you will receive power. What's that? What's that verse? Acts 1 a Acts 1 8. Y'all right there. Let's, we're gonna go there until we all get it. Acts 1 8. Everybody go to Acts the first chapter. Verse 8. The foundational scripture for the book of Acts. And pretty much the rest of the entire New Testament is Acts. One, verse number eight. Look at what it says. Oh, I can go by myself. Hold on. Look at what it says, verse number eight. But you will see power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria, and even to the remotest part of the earth. But you will receive power. They receive the power to do the miraculous things that you see them doing as the Holy Spirit fell upon them on the day of Pentecost. Why were they empowered? So they can make some more money. So they can build bigger houses. So they can buy a Lamborghini. So they can make the sports team. But they receive power so that they can be his witnesses throughout the known world. Sometimes we get it twisted in our modern day era. We want power so that we can selfishly utilize it for our own gain. And if we get time, then we'll utilize it for the building of God's kingdom. And I think, Dre, this is just me. I, I can't prove it. I just think that for some of us, God hit the mute button or the pause button on the dissemination of the power because we're not ready to use it in the right way. So I would suggest, instead of praying, God, give me the power to overcome some of this worldly stuff, I would suggest God saying, God, give me the power to be the vessel that you want me to be today. Give me the power to chase demons. Give me the power to proclaim your name. God, what you doing in my house, in my neighborhood, in my school, Give me the power to be a vessel that you can use in that arena. Amen. 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 All right. All right. All right. So look at this. Listen, listen, listen to this. In order for us as individuals or and as a team to accomplish our goal, we must do what? With our time, talents, and treasures. We just talked about that. In order for us to reach our individual goals, whatever the goal that you set at the beginning of the year, in order for us to reach our church-related goals, our collective goals, what is one thing that we, as a church and as individuals, must do with our time, our talents, and our treasures? Yes. Can you give me one more additive with that? Give sacrificially to. Mm -hmm. I need you to get that into your spirit. In order for us as a church to get to where we're trying to go, it's going to require some sacrifices. No great movement of God happens without people making sacrifices. No championship is won in baseball, football, basketball, soccer, you name your sport without people making sacrifices. No company becomes a Fortune 500 company without people making sacrifices. 
So that's going to become a part of our DNA, sacrificial giving. Amen. Put that next slide up there, Shania. Right there, right there, right there, right there. Why? Because we are spirit-filled, spirit-empowered witnesses for the Lord. Can y'all say that with me? I am a spirit-filled, spirit-empowered witness for the Lord. Come on, you online, say it, say it with me. I am a spirit-filled, spirit-empowered witness for the Lord. Amen. Acts fifth chapter. Acts the fifth chapter. Look at what it says right there in verse number 12. At the hands of the apostles, many signs and wonders were taking place among the people. And they were all with one accord in Solomon's portico. But none of the rest dared to associate with them. However, the people held them in high esteem. And all the more believers in the Lord, multitudes of men and women were constantly added to their number to such an extent that they even carried the sick out into the streets and laid them on cots and pallets so that when Peter came by, at least his shadow <laughs> might fall on any of them. Also, the people from the cities in the vicinity of Jerusalem were coming together, bringing people who were sick or afflicted with unclean spirits, and they were all being healed. Verse 17, but the high priest rose up along with all his associates, that is the sect of the Sadducees, and they were filled with jealousy. A Sadducee was just like this religious sect, this group of people within that, within Jerusalem. And the thing we need to remember about them is that they did not believe in the resurrection. They didn't believe that people could be raised from the dead. So when now the apostles are running around here talking about Jesus being raised from the dead by God the Father, they got a major problem with that. When Lazarus was raised from the dead by Jesus, they had a major problem with that, and it expedited their attempts to take him out. So just remember, they were sad, you see, because they didn't believe in the resurrection. That's the easiest way to remember it. Sad, you see, because they didn't remember, believe in the resurrection. Y'all with me? All right, jump down, verse number 27. When they had brought them, they stood them before the council. The high priest questioned them, saying, We gave you strict orders not to continue teaching in this name. And yet you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. Listen to what Peter says. But Peter and the apostles answered, We must obey God rather than man. Underline that, highlight it, draw a circle around it, whatever you do to make sure you get notes. That is powerful. We're going to talk about it. We must obey God rather than Pookie and Shay Shay. I wasn't going to say Pookie. All right, all right. Scroll down, scroll down, scroll down, scroll down, scroll down. Verse number 41. So they went on their way from the presence of the council. Rejoicing that they had been considered worthy hey, hey, to suffer shame hey, hey, for his name. And every day in the temple and from house to house, they kept right on teaching and preaching just as Jesus as the Christ. I didn't want to talk to you on today. You can't stop this. You can't stop this. Let us pray. Father God, we just thank you for who you are in our lives. We thank you for being our king and our Lord God. We thank you for being our master. We thank you for all the things that you have done, you are doing, you continue to do for us, for your love, your grace, your mercy, and your joy. We thank you for being our strong tower, our prince of peace. God, we love us in you. 
Gosh. We need a good word from you. Give it to us on the day. I decrease that you may increase. Holy Spirit, have your way. They prayed this morning for you to saturate this place. And we believe it is so. Touch every heart. In this place and online, touch every heart, Father. Pull out pieces. You knew. I prayed that when, when we began to preach this, that you would show me who needed what. Do it, Father, like only you can do it. It's in your son, Jesus the Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 It is happening. Jesus told his disciples that they would be empowered when the Holy Spirit fell upon him, upon them, and they would be his witnesses in Judea, Jerusalem, Samaria, and through the furthest parts of the earth. And it is happening. They are performing miracles, signs, and wonders. They are healing the sick. They are strengthening the lame. They are preaching the gospel. Souls are being saved. People are repenting. And the church is growing. They are doing it. It is happening. And can't you sense, or can you just imagine the excitement taking place right now? Can you just imagine all the talk that's taking place right there at the watering hole? Can you just imagine the excitement reverberating throughout the apostles? I mean, this is what they had trained for. They were three and a half years with Jesus, OJT, for this very moment. I mean, this is the thing that they had been praying for. Now it was taking place. God was utilizing them to do great things on the earth. There's nothing like walking in your purpose. Mama, I don't care what it is. There's no greater feeling than to do, be doing that which you have been created to do. There's a sense of excitement that comes upon you. A sense of energy, power, strength comes upon you. There's definition that comes upon your life, Mike. Meaning, there's a reason for me to get up in the morning and get up out of because I have purpose. I know there's something that God wants for me to do. And I can't do it sitting in the bed. Hey, hey. We can't do it whining and crying. We can't do it watching TV. We got to get busy. There's definition. There's purpose that comes with our lives. Look at how Oprah Winfrey puts it, Shania. There you go. There is no greater gift you can give or receive than to honor your calling. It's why you were born and how you become most truly alive. I need some adventure in my life. Are you walking in your purpose? I need some excitement in my life. My life feels dull. Ineffective. Try doing that what you were created to do. Try doing some things that will last eternally and not just for a fleeting moment. It's just something about it that adds energy and passion to your life. But don't be naive. Because the world, as well as our enemy, Satan, is not going to be happy 
as we walk in our purpose. In fact, they will do everything they can to derail us and to stop us from doing that which we have been created to do. Is that not what happened to Jesus? Jesus is traveling throughout the region. He's preaching the gospel. He's growing in popularity. He's growing in power. He's growing in influence. And some feel threatened. So they begin to do everything they can to stop him from doing that which our Father sent him to do. They try to do everything they can to send him, to get rid of him and send him away. And he says, not only will they come after me, but they will come after you also. Mm -hmm. Remember what he said? We looked at it in Bible study. Put that on the screen, Shania. Next, next slide. Switch, Nehemiah. If the world hates you, keep in mind that it hated me. Remember what I told you? A servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will persecute you also. If they obeyed me, they will obey yours also. I love that first part. If they hated you. If the world hates you, keep in mind that they hated me. They persecuted me. They are going to persecute you. Why? Because we are his followers. And as we begin to proclaim his name and lift him up and honor him, they are going to come after us. The haters will pull up. And as the apostles keep performing miracles and teaching the high priest and company are not happy. Like with Jesus, their jealousy is preventing them from being able to see what the Father is doing. Look at what it says. Go to Acts, the fifth chapter. Look at what it says in verse number 17. Then the high priest and all his associates who were members of the party of the Sadducees were filled with jealousy. The high priest and all the associates who were members of the party of the Sadducees, look at that, were filled with jealousy. There goes that demon again, that monster known as jealousy. It's rearing its ugly head, just like with Jesus here it comes again. You remember with Jesus, they got jealous of him and sought to kill him and to get rid of him. The same thing is happening now. They can't see what God is trying to do because of their jealousy. And that's the thing with all of us. Jealousy prevents us from being able to see what God is trying to do. God is trying to do great things in the world. But because it's not us, we get jealous of somebody else. We get too distracted by the attention going their way. We get too distracted about their popularity and their fame that we can't see that God is doing great things. All we see is what we don't have. All we see is what we can't get. But we got to understand who God is and how great and magnificent he is, how powerful he is. We have to understand that our God is multifaceted. He can do multiple things at one time. 
he can bless me, Dexter, Barbara, and Mike all at the same time. He doesn't have to pick one and then wait for that to finish and then pick another one and then wait for that to finish to pick another one. He can do it all at one time. Anthony, he can use all of us in this room plus the 100 people in South Africa, another 100 in South America, another 1,000 in Europe, some over there in Africa. He can use all of us at the same time. And then some more. We have to remove our mindset to thinking it's just if, it's this if or. And understand, it can be a both. It can be mutually inclusive. And understand that what God wants to do is to be celebrated. Mm -hmm. That as God is working through Leslie, I celebrate what God is doing through Leslie. As God is working through Mama Joan, I celebrate what God is doing through Mama Joan. Don't hate on Mama Joan. Don't wish I had Mama Jones' gifts and talents. Don't try to imitate Mama Jones to be like her. But I'd be like the person, the man, or the woman of God that he has created me to be. Not like somebody else. Right? But the disciples, they don't get that. They don't understand what's going on. The religious leaders, I'm sorry, don't get that. They don't see what's going on. Because they see the jealousy. They see what the father is not is doing through somebody else, not through them. So they have the apostles arrested. They don't stay there very long because an angel shows up, unlocks the door, allows the apostles to flow out then closes the door and tells them, go, return to the temple, and you keep preaching the whole gospel. First thing in the morning, 0600, someone's light hits, they're there. They don't run home and start acting scared. They don't go hiding like they did before, but they are there. And they begin to proclaim the good news of Jesus the Christ. Now, when the religious leaders get in, they're ready for work. They're ready to have their board meeting and talk about the things that took place. They want to interrogate them. They say, go and get those with wrath. They go. They go to get them. The door is locked and it's secure. But when they open it, there's nobody in there. So they are perplexed. What happened? The guards are still here. Everything is still intact. Where are they? And then somebody comes and runs and says, look, they're over there. They're back in the temple preaching the same stuff y'all told them not to preach. The officers that run, get them, collect them, bring them to the Sanhedrin. And look at what the Sanhedrin say. Look at verse number 28. Acts, the fifth chapter. Verse number 28. We gave you strict orders not to continue teaching in this name. And yet you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. We told you to stop that. We told you to stop walking around here preaching this resurrection, preaching this Jesus. We don't believe in that. And we are the learned men. You are these unlearned riffraffs running around here causing up trouble, stirring up issues. What are you doing? Cease and desist. Look at Peter's response. Look at verse 29. 
Peter and the other apostles replied, we must obey God rather than human beings. The God of our ancestors raised Jesus from the dead, whom you killed by hanging him on a cross. God exalted him to his own right hand as prince and savior that he might bring Israel to repentance and forgive their sins. We are witnesses of these things. And so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. We must obey God rather than man. I love that. Because in order for us to be spirit-filled, spirit-empowered witnesses for the Lord, we must have some toughness about us. Some stick to it if I can pick up me a word. A commitment about us. Some resilience. Some perseverance. We must have the ability to say, I see the trials and tribulations coming my way. I see the haters coming my way. I see the enemies coming my way. I hear them talking about me and trying to stop me. I hear them calling me a holy roller. But I'm not going to allow them and what they have to say to stop me from doing that which God has called me to do. I'm not a quitter. I'm not going to be the weak link that the enemy uses to cause division. I'm not going to be the one that cannot be depended upon. But I shall be a vessel that God can utilize to do great things in this world. Going to be committed. Yesterday, Shayla had a flag football game. And as those of you who are in the greater Charlotte area would know, it was raining extremely hard on yesterday morning. But Lakeisha, we got in our car anyway. And we started making our way to the game anyway. And as we're riding, there's this lady running down the street. And she's not running from anybody, but she has on her running shoes, her running clothes, and she's getting her miles in. So I turn to Nehemiah and I say, that's a runner. Not somebody who runs, but a runner. Because there's a difference between somebody who runs and a runner. You see, somebody who runs will get out there and they'll run when the weather is nice. Not too hot, not too cold, no rain, no snow. I'm going to get out here and enjoy the day. That's somebody who runs. But a runner is going to be out there. Rain, sleet, snow, cold, hot. It doesn't matter. They are committed to their craft. They are committed to doing what they have to do. And they understand that it's always not going to be good. That every day running it's not going to be a great day. That in order for them to succeed as a runner, they're going to have to be resilient, tough, able to overcome some obstacles of life. And I just want to challenge you on this morning to get a little tougher. We have these spiritual goals and these aspirations, these things that we want to do. But at the first sign of trouble, we find ourselves quitting on ourselves and quitting on God. 
But in order for us to get to where we're trying to go, we can't keep quitting at the first sign of trouble and then starting over again and then quitting and then starting over again and then quitting and then starting over again. It comes a point where you got to bow your back. And get a little stronger. And say, I see you coming. It's the same thing you tried to do to me last time. I'm not quitting. I'm not giving up. I'm going to believe in myself. I'm going to believe in what God can do through me. I am spirit filled. I am spirit empowered. I am a witness for the Lord. Quitting, I'm gonna move forward. I'm tough. This might not like this. I'm F-150, Ford F-150, tough. Mike ain't gonna like that. He's a Chevy guy. <laughs> Keisha your Chevy girl. <laughs> My Chevy folks ain't gonna like that. <laughs> if I can utilize that slogan from that commercial, I'm Ford tough. <laughs> Built like a rock. That's what the Chevy folks say. <laughs> Be built like a rock. Be built like a rock. This thing called life is not a sprint. It's a marathon. And things are going to happen. But if you are weak-minded, if you have a quitting spirit, you're never going to do the things that you set out to do. You're never going to do the things that God has created you to do. These apostles, these disciples could not be weak-minded. In order for them to be the vessels that God wanted them to be, they had to be tough. And Peter says, I don't care what y'all say. We're going to keep preaching the gospel. We're going to obey God, not man. You can beat us, we're going to obey God. Not man. You can put us in prison. We're going to obey God, not man. You can threaten us, but we are going to obey God, not man. And of course, you know, that really infuriated you know, the, 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 the religious leaders. I mean, they hot now. And they intend to go ahead and handle their business. They said, we're we just, we just going to get rid of them. Execute them. But there's a guy by the name of Gamaliel. Wise guy. Well respected amongst the group. Stands up. Says, take the apostles from out here. Let's have a talk, y'all. And he says, be patient. Don't you remember the other people who rose up. One rose up trying to cause a Roman insurrection and it was squashed and his followers dispersed. Another one rose up and the same thing happened. People began to follow him and as they followed, we got all excited, but it was squashed as well and his followers. Now we have this Jesus thing. And people are following after him. But he has been crucified. And now his followers are talking about he has been raised from the dead. If that is really true, if that thing is of God, there is nothing that you and I can do. If it's of man, we don't even have to worry about it. It's going to go away. But if that thing is of God, there's nothing we can do. We can't stop this. And that's a little good life lesson for a lot of us. If I can put us in the shoes of Gamil, sometimes we try to put our hands in everything. 
we see something that's not going the way in which we think it should go, and we want to put our hands in it, put our mouth on it, and make changes and adjustments. And sometimes we need to just take a step back and let God do his thing. If it's of man, it's not going anywhere. But if it is of God, God's going to take care. If the things our children are doing are not of God, I want to be taken care of. It's our job to pray. But there comes a point where we have to allow them to make some decisions and live with those decisions and begin to grow up and mature. And then trust God to do what God is going to do. So they take Gamil's advice. They have them beaten, and then they send them on their way. But look at what happens as the disciples begin to leave. Look at verse number 41. The apostles left the Sanhedrin rejoicing because they had been counted worthy of suffering disgrace for the name of Jesus. They leave with the understanding they leave with the understanding that they have been arrested. They have been talked about. They have been interrogated. They have been beaten on behalf of their Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. So now they begin to rejoice at the fact that they had the opportunity to suffer for Christ's sake. That don't make sense, Pastor. They, they rejoicing. They were falsely arrested, but they're rejoicing. They were threatened, but they're rejoicing. They were interrogated, but they're rejoicing. They were imprisoned, but they were rejoicing. They're rejoicing for the fact that they get to suffer like their Savior suffered. <laughs> they didn't see it as this world's worst thing that ever happened. They saw it as an Excellent opportunity to be accounted among the number of people who would get to suffer for Christ's sake. Look at how Peter puts it, Nehemiah. Look at how Peter puts it. First Peter. Next one. Dear friends, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that has come on you to test you. I know something strange were happening to you. But rejoice in as much as you participate in the sufferings of Christ, so that you may be overjoyed when his glory is revealed. If you are insulted because of the name of Christ, you are blessed. For the spirit of glory, we talked about that on Wednesday, and of God rests on you. If you suffer, it should not be as a murderer or a thief or any other kind of criminal or even as a meddler. <clears throat> However, if you suffer as a Christian, do not be ashamed, but praise God that you bear that name. Jesus says, pick up your cross and follow me. And what they have done is that we picked up our cross and we're going to follow you. And they are excited that they have the opportunity to follow him. They are rejoicing at the fact that they get to follow him. They are praising at the fact that they get to follow him in his sufferings. Look at another one. Go to the next slide, Nehemiah. Look at what this James says. Count it all joy, my brothers and sisters, when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. And let endurance have its perfect results so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. 
count it all joy when you find yourself in the midst of trials and tribulations. Don't whine about it. Don't cry about it. Don't go complaining about it. He says, count it all joy. Look at what Paul says. Remember, he's in a Roman jail when he writes the book of Philippians. He's there for doing that which he has been created to do, walking his purpose. He is there because he has been preaching the gospel. Look at what he says. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Not rejoice in the Lord when it's good for me. When the sun is out and it's 75 degrees and it's good running weather. But he says, rejoice in the Lord always. Every day. Hard times, rejoice. Bad times, rejoice. Frustrating times, rejoice. Persecution is coming upon me, rejoice. Haters are getting at me. Rejoice in the Lord always. I don't know about you. I've had some hard times. Some frustrating things have happened to me just like they have happened to you. But one thing I have learned to do is rejoice in the midst of it. To have a pep in my step in the midst of it. To be able to raise up holy hands in the midst of it. To be able to open up my mouth and shout hallelujah in the midst of the trials. I don't know about you, but I know trials are coming. I know that there's an enemy who wants to stop me from doing that which I have been created to do. But I refuse to be a quitter. I refuse to give up. I refuse to be the weak link. When the trials come, I made up my mind, I'm going to rejoice. I'm going to rejoice. I'm going to praise him. I'm going to honor him. I'm going to glorify him. I'm going to magnify him. Anybody in the house know what I'm talking about? Anybody going through some things right now? Anybody been through some stuff? Anybody had haters talking about you? Going through some persecution, calling you all different types of names, belittling you, demeaning you, lost your job, bodies racked in pain, child's bodies racked in pain, hurting, going through things. Listen, I just want to encourage you to rejoice in the midst of it. Miss <laughs> Eleanor, rejoice in the midst of it. Sometimes you got to have your own private praise party. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm going through some things right now. I'm not going to have a pity party. I'm going to have a praise party. Why are you jumping up and down? Because God is good. It don't look good. I didn't ask you what it looked like. I know what it is. God is good. And I'm going to praise him. I'm going to glorify him. Y'all sitting still, so y'all must not been know what I'm talking about. But he's been good to me. He's been great to me. He's been magnificent to me, so I'm just going to praise him, honor him, glorify him, not worried about what it looks like. At least it don't look good right now, but I'm going to praise him. <laughs> Lamont, it don't look good. It wasn't looking good for a while, but you stuck with it. And now God has done some great things, so we're going to praise him for you. Hey, my children don't want to behave. I'm going to praise them anyway. My wife acting crazy. I'm going to praise them anyway. My husband don't want to go to work. I'm going to praise them anyway. Because he's been just that good. Y'all looking at me like y'all don't know what I'm talking about. But I'm going to have to praise them for some of y'all. Because y'all just sitting there looking at me like a lump on the law. But I just have to praise them by myself. Because I know. That he's been good. I know he's been wonderful. I know he's been great. So when the trials come, we're going to praise him. Something's going to happen this week. 
Something's going to happen this week. You have a choice. I can quit and give up and whine and moan and complain. Call Lady Ann and talk to her about an hour about all that's going on in my life and all this. And call your friend and moan and whine about all that. You can do all that. It's fine. We're here to talk. But at some point, we're going to have to get our praise on. At some point, we got to change our mindset. At some point, I had to make up my mind. I'm full F-150 tough. I'm tough as a rock. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm built like a rock. I'm not going down without a fight. I don't have no weak jaw. You can hit me with the left. You can hit me with the right. You can punch me in the nose. You can drop kick me. You can come off the top belt with me. I'm going to get back up. <laughs> hey, Keith, you getting back up? I'm going to get back up. I'm not quitting. I'm getting back up. Bobby, you getting back up? Yes. Well, you, you went a while without being able to walk. You didn't get back up. You didn't get back up. And you can't get up with no defeated mindset. You can't get up with the mindset that it's over. It's always going to be like this. This is how life is for people like me. No, the devil is a liar. God has great things for me. He has wonderful things for me. And I might not be able to see it with my physical eyes, but I see it in the spiritual realm. And I'm going to praise him. I'm going to glorify him. I'm going to magnify him. I'm going to rejoice in the midst of my trial. Yeah. Rejoice in the midst of it. I know who he is. I know he's good. Know it. Linda, he's good. Good. Know he is. I rejoice in the Lord. Always. Find that song near my hand. And again I say, again I say, rejoice, Israel Houghton, in the Lord always. And again I say, again I say, rejoice. 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 Yeah. yeah. The trials are coming. Rejoice. Even in the midst of my issues, my trials, I'm going to say, just make sure you understand, I'm saying, when I say my, I'm talking about us, so I'm going to change my, 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 my pronoun. Even in the midst of our trials, our issues, the stuff that we are going through, we can make up our mind to look at things differently. We can make up in our minds, I'm tough. I didn't go through all that stuff I went through in the streets to become a Christian and be weak. In the street, you say something to me, I'm ready to punch you in the nose, ready to fight. But when it comes to the enemy, he punches, we go running. No, 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 no. We're going to put our spiritual dukes up. We're going to fight. We fight. We're not giving up. We tough. We tough. Mean Joe Green tough. Got to find me a better reference. Uh, mean Joe Green. They too young. They don't know who Mean Joe Green is. <laughs> mean Joe Green tough. Amen. Jack Lambert tough. Lester Hayes tough. Right, 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 right. Mike Singletary, tough. Right. Mike Crazy Tyson, tough. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, we just thank you for who you are. Thank you for being our King and our Lord God. Thank you for being our Master.
Take all the things that you have done, you are doing, you continue to do for us for your love, your grace, your mercy, and your joy. Thank you for being our strong tower, our Prince of Peace. Life is going to happen. And we know that you are in control. And we know what your word says, that all things work to the good for them who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. And some days it don't look like it, but we walk by faith, not by sight. So as we lean and depend and trust in you, we're going to rejoice. Our declaration is that we believe in who you are and what you do. We are spirit-filled, spirit-empowered witnesses for you. We're not going to quit on you, and we're not going to quit on ourselves. But just like Peter and the crew were tough, we're going to be tough. Just like they were committed, we are committed. Use us like only you can. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. So we get to the football game, and it stopped raining. And the girls are out there running around. Then it starts raining again. And then we're sitting around. It's like that look aggravating rain you know what i mean it's not full-fledged open up gonna do its thing going about its business it's just like it's just sitting there just misty hover, hovering over you nothing no it's still there but the girls kept playing they stayed out there they weren't talking about my hair and all that old frivolous stuff but they run across the middle, snatching balls out the air. They dropping back at the footwork going on. They got the footwork at the Peyton Manning going on and throwing the ball. They played. And I was proud of my princess. But she stayed out there and she played. She didn't quit. She didn't give up. She didn't come over there whining to me. But she played. Stay in the game, guys. Stay committed. The rain is going to come. <laughs> the thunderstorms are going to come. You better mess up a good moment, won't you? <laughs> the lightning is going to come. Right? Right? So just remember, just remember, God is there. And he will never leave you nor forsake you. Now we have to do our part. Let's not leave ourselves, nor forsake him. Stay in the game. Stay in the game. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. amen. You grab my babies, Nehemiah? Grab my babies. Grab my babies. Amen. God, it's good. Just remember, uh, we got a meeting on Wednesday, church meeting on Wednesday. We're going to talk about money. We're going to talk about business. We're going to talk about this building. Make sure you are there. Any questions that you may have about the money, um, any suggestions that you may have, we'll be ready to talk and ready to listen. Amen. Amen. April 22nd it is. April 22nd, Samaritan's Feet. Go ahead and get your schedule cleared until you can be there. April the 1st, noon, next Saturday. So we're going to be out at, did I say Love Church? Joy Church. No, Love Church. Love Church in, in Monroe. Love Church in Monroe. So we make sure you look at it. It's posted inside of the uh, Facebook group. So just look right there. You get all the information you need to make sure you are there and ready to go. Amen. All right. All right. All hearts and minds are clear.
So just uh, one quick announcement while we're waiting on the babies. We are launching a choir here at Zort. Um, so you'll see some announcements coming out in our Facebook group. Stop, 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 stop. Say that one more time. We are what? We are launching mm -hmm. a choir here at Exhort. Pause. <laughs> so you guys have occasionally seen one of our um, people that we call over to um, lead our worship services. She's going to be starting soon to um, get interest and in seeing announcements about who wants to be a part of the choir. And so we'll start out slow. We have um, a couple of Sundays a month that we'll perform. Um, I hate looking at him because y'all know he look at you like that. Oh, it's going to happen. It's going down. It's locking it in. Mm -hmm. So anyway, if you're interested in joining, please, please let us know. Okay. We do life together together. So this is about to manifest. So I'm looking forward to what God is going to be doing through us and with us. Amen. Yeah. Amen. All right. Amen. So we're looking for folks who can sing, folks who cannot sing, but uh -huh. want to sing. Come on. Amen. They say when you put the non-singers and the singers together, <laughs> it makes excellent harmony. But the non-singers, they're being the bass part. <laughs> so if you like music and you want to sing come on come on we're going to put it together he's going to lead us and i look forward to it amen i'm not going to participate i sing too well i don't want to show anybody that you, you clap too fast please you clap too fast and, and guys now, but guys, we want to be all ladies now. Some of y'all can sing. Come on, come on, come on. We're gonna, we'll do it. We're going we're gonna to put it together. Amen. All right. Go ahead and close this out. All right. All right. Let us um, get ready to, to adjoin. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for this wonderful uh, message on today, God. Title, You Can't Stop This. Because we, we know you are with us, Lord, and we just pray, Lord, that as we get ready to depart from this place, that that worry stays rooted, Lord, and nothing stops us from being all that you have created for us to be, God. We thank you for your manservant, Lord. God, I ask that you pour back into him that which he has poured out to us. Fill his cup, Lord. Don't let him be drained nor dry, Lord, but God, just miraculously fill his cup, Lord. And we just thank you, Father, for what you're doing in this house through the leadership of this man's servant, Pastor Herbert Wallace, Jr., God. And as we depart from this place, we pray for safe traveling, safe journeys for those of you that have joined online. We just pray that your day is blessed even more, just keeping our spirits that you can't stop this. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. And tell amen. someone hello. I'm not going to do your part. Hug somebody. Hug somebody. Tell you love them. <laughs>